My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. My flesh may fail, I may fall ill, grow old. My heart may fail, I may struggle with worry or fear or doubt, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion, all that I need, forever. Nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, if he is our Lord. In these uncertain times, what a wonderful truth to be able to hold on to. Well, good morning. And welcome to our service today, wherever you are joining us from in the world. And whatever you are facing in your life at the moment, we pray that today you will meet with the living God through his living word and be comforted and strengthened. Our first hymn reminds us of this truth that we have been considering. Praise to the Lord, who o'er all things so wondrously reigns, shelters you under his wings, and so gladly sustains. Have you not seen how your desires have been granted in what he ordains? Praise to the Lord, O let all that is within me adore him. Yeah. 
I wonder what expression you picture on Jesus's face as he watches you do or say or think something wrong. Anger, criticism, disapproval, disappointment. The gospel would suggest none of these things, but that as he sees our commitment to independence and self-protection, to our own position and comfort, as he sees our hurts and fears, our bitterness and tears, express themselves in so many small and selfish and self-defeating ways over and over again, he looks at us with infinite, unclouded compassion, unmixed with anything else, pure compassion. But he does more than look. He stands before his Father and our Father, the Father whose will with his own will is one. The Father who therefore delights in nothing more than to respond to the will of his Son. Before this Father he stands and pleads our case and asks forgiveness on our behalf. If anybody does sin, the New Testament tells us, we have an advocate with the Father who always lives to intercede for us, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One, who has paid the penalty for our sins. As we sin, the One who died to make possible the forgiveness of our sins asks the Father who delights to forgive, to forgive our sins. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. This is the Gospel. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. A moment of quiet in which to do this for ourselves. And now, as the people of God, let us come before him with confidence together as we pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have gone our own way, not loving you as we ought, nor loving our neighbours as ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. Father, forgive us. Help us to love you and our neighbours, and to live for your honour and glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, Raise us, who trust in him, from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where our lives are now hidden with Christ in God, that when Christ, who is our life, appears, we also may appear with him in glory. Amen. Go!
Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to this rainy Sunday. I don't know if it's rainy where you are, but it's rainy where I am. Uh, and we haven't had rain for a very long time, have we? It's been like three weeks or something crazy. Um, well, um, my courgette plants that are just here, they are loving it. Look at how big and lovely they are. Um, they're loving it. And all my other plants in the garden, they're loving the rain as well. Um, uh, well, this rain reminds me of a verse in the Bible. Well, now you can say lots of things about rain from the Bible. Well, this is a verse. Uh, this is a verse, actually, that's from a song. So it comes from a song, and it comes from a song written by Moses. How unusual. Moses doesn't uh, write a few songs, but we mo mostly hear the ones from, by David, don't we? But this is a song from Moses, and it's one of Moses' last songs. So it comes from the book of Deuteronomy. And he says, listen, you heavens, and I will speak, L you earth, the words of my mouth. Um, and he says, let my teaching fall like rain, and my words descend like dew, like showers on new grass, like abundant rain on tender plants. Now, these plants, uh, they're fairly big now, uh, but I've got a few little radishes that you can't see out of shots. I'll show you later. Um, but they are they are fairly tender um, and uh, and delicate. Uh, in fact, I broke one the other day. No, the wind the wind broke one. Uh, I didn't. Well, um, just like these plants, they love this rain. They just go, whoa, a big drink. Now I've been watering them, but this is proper rain from the sky and is really good for them. Uh, and. Um, and they're going to go big and strong and uh, juicy courgettes and other plants that maybe you've got in your garden. Well, God's teaching from God's word, the Bible, is meant to be like that on us. Uh, so when we hear God's word from the Bible, uh, we can go, oh, isn't that amazing? Uh, that's so what I needed. I needed to hear from God. Did you know that these words in the Bible, they're from God? They're from God to us. It's his letter. Uh, and it can feed us just like rain. I mean, it gives us a good drink so that so uh, God's word can give us a good drink. Um, and sometimes it might seem a bit boring, but you just need to get into it. And you need to be excited by God's uh, word because it's really, really amazing. And so let's say God's word says together, God's word says, let my teaching fall like rain and my words descend like dew, like showers on new grass, like abundant rain on tender plants. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 2. And so that's what God's word says. Uh, so when you're listening to God's word, uh, whether from a talk or in a Bible study or reading the Bible on your own, uh, whatever you're doing, drink in the goodness and let you be grow big and strong and juicy let's sing together now to god <laughs>
we could get to know our God again. The Lord is good, the Lord is strong, and we will live our lives for Him. Hello everybody, my name is Lizzie Paul and I work for Wycliffe Bible Translators in Tanzania. I work on language analysis and developing writing systems for two languages, Mbugwe and Rangi. At the beginning of March, the other family who were under Doma serving with Wycliffe returned to the US when their work permits expired and so I relocated to Mbeya where I lived during my first term in Tanzania. At the moment, everybody in the Dodoma office is working remotely from home, so this move hasn't made much of a difference to my work, but it has been really good to have the fellowship and community of friends in Mbeya. I recently heard that two other US colleagues have been given permission to return to Tanzania, and so are planning to arrive later this month. One does not have a valid work permit, and so is currently in the process of applying for a business visa. Please pray that the application will be processed quickly, so that they can return as planned. With the return of these colleagues, we can proceed with planning the recording of the Mbugwe Jesus film, which has been delayed over the last year because of Covid. The recording dates have been set for June, so please pray that this time the plans will come to fruition. Pray too for the voice actors as they prepare their roles, and that God will be preparing the hearts of the wider Mbugwe community to hear the good news of Jesus in their own language. Praise God that the new Mbugwe translator, Modamba, has started well and has made really good progress with learning to read in Bugwe. Continue to pray for him as he settles into his new role, especially since his supervisor is training him remotely from the US. The Rangi New Testament is approaching completion, but there is still quite a lot of work to be done in preparation for the prior final proof reading. I'm hoping to be able to travel to do some research and testing of the writing system, perhaps in June or July. Please pray that this research will help us sort out the remaining issues in the Rangi writing system, so the Rangi will be able to read and understand the New Testament easily. Thank you all for your continued prayers for the work of sharing God's word in Tanzania, in the languages the people of Tanzania can truly understand. Let's pray now for Lizzie Poole. Lord, we pray for Lizzie as she works remotely from Mbeya in the south of Tanzania and later travels to the Mbugwe and Rangi areas in the north to finalise research for the Rangi New Testament. Please keep her safe and give her all the skills that she needs. Thank you for Madambu, the new Mbugwe translator. Please help him to fit into the team quickly. We pray for the voice actors preparing to dub the Jesus film in the local language and for the reception of this amongst those who don't yet believe. We also pray for her colleagues who are hoping to join her from the US and Switzerland in May. Please may they receive the documents that they need and soon be able to start work again. In Jesus' name, Amen. Lord, when we pray for your world, we want to ask for what is in, according, in accordance with um, your will. Uh, we know from your word that justice and peace are high on your agenda, so we pray for justice and peace to prevail in Myanmar and in Hong Kong. 
We pray too for peace in all places where there is war, especially at the moment Yemen and Syria. We know that you prayed for your followers while you were on earth. So we pray especially for those in areas of persecution, including North Korea, India and Nigeria. Please give them strength to stay faithful to you. You said you came that we might have abundant life. So we pray for your people who are fighting COVID throughout the world, especially in Brazil and India. May they represent you well in word and in deed and give them your strength when they feel overwhelmed. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray now for ourselves. Lord, we feel rather like your disciples between the resurrection and your ascension. We feel in a place of transition and waiting between the complete lockdown on the one side and a return to our normal freedoms and future. Like them, may we enjoy our times with you and help us to learn the lessons that we need to learn to be able to move on to the next stage, both as individuals and as a church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The uh, Church of England special prayer for today seems particularly apt, so let's finish with that. O Almighty God, who alone can order the unruly wills and affections of sinful men, grant unto your people that they may love the things which you command and desire those which you promise so that among the sundry and manifold changes of the world our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found through jesus christ our lord amen and now let's say the lord's prayer together our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>
Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 9, verses 1 to 8. That's Matthew chapter 9, verses 1 to 8. Jesus stepped into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own town. Some men brought to him a paralysed man lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. At this, some of the teachers of the law said to themselves, This fellow is blaspheming. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said, Why do you entertain evil thoughts in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralysed man, get up, take your mat and go home. Then the man got up and went home. When the crowd saw this, they were filled with awe and they praised God who had given such authority to man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray as we we come to God's word. Dear Father, please help us to see Jesus now as we read this passage and to hear you speaking to us and we ask it in his name. Amen. This week we've all seen the deepening Covid crisis in India and we've seen the huge need of so many as uh, oxygen supplies run out and so many have the virus and it reminds us we live in a world of huge need in all kinds of ways. I mean we know that ourselves this past year uh, our need for physical health our mental health, but also our our finances. And um, these are all significant. And as individuals, we all have different needs. I wonder what you feel your deepest need at the moment is. What is my deepest need? And what can Jesus do about it? What does Jesus see as he looks into my life? Well, today in our passage, we see Jesus' concern uh, for one individual, And yet it tells us so much more about who he is and what he's come to do. The first thing here, we see that Jesus addresses this man's deepest need. And uh, the encounter takes place uh, in Capernaum. Uh, It's the town in Galilee, which Jesus uh, made his base uh, during his ministry. You see that in verse one. Jesus stepped into a boat, crossed over and came to his hometown. So it's a place where uh, people knew Jesus and yet what happened here would be astonishing on every level. We read some men brought to him a paralysed man lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith he said to the man let's just break off there and we're we're introduced this paralysed man and in any time or culture we can only imagine the profound and devastating impact it had on his life. Uh, He wouldn't be able to go anywhere himself, relying on other people uh, to carry him around. No sense of independence, uh, probably unable to work uh, and all the kind of uh, physical challenges of of trying to cope. And alongside that, the personal, personal and emotional impact it undoubtedly had on him. And yet uh, the great thing is this this paralytic had faith filled friends and they do the best thing they could do. They brought him to Jesus. They believed that this Jesus of Nazareth could do something for their friend. And as Jesus sees them bringing him, he he sees their faith. And it reminds us that as we come to the Lord with our hopeless situations, that is when we see him acting uh, and bringing his gracious power to bear. But what Jesus does next is utterly surprising. He doesn't say to the man, get up and walk. I mean, that was the hope. That was clearly the expectation. After all, uh, this new teacher, he'd been uh, healing so many people. That's what everyone is hoping for and expecting. But instead, we read when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Jesus sees beyond his very obvious need of healing and instead he sees a deeper need within him. Jesus sees him as a person 
not just as a paralyzed man. And he speaks uh, these words of comfort and grace. Take heart, son. And these words, uh, take heart, we find them throughout the Old Testament. And normally they work words spoken by God himself to his people when they're very fearful and afraid, effectively saying, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And it seems this man is only too aware of his sin. I mean, we don't know the details, but Jesus sees beyond his physical condition to the greater need he has, the guilt that he's carrying around within. And what freeing words to hear from Jesus. Take heart, son, don't be afraid. Your sins are forgiven. Your sins, they're, they're cancelled, taken away, dealt with, gone. And the wonderful thing is that this is Jesus' priority. This is why he's coming. It's what the angel told Joseph before Jesus was, was born. You are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Whatever we think of ourselves, whatever other people think of us, our greatest need before God is for our sin to be dealt with, to be forgiven and taken away. Are you aware of that? Is that something you recognise for yourself? And Jesus has come to address our deepest need to proclaim the forgiveness of sins. But Jesus' words here are not just uh, gracious and freeing. They're also deeply controversial. And next we see how Jesus faces opposition from religious experts. And we're looking at uh, verses three and four. So these words of Jesus, son, your sins are forgiven. That was an astonishing thing to say. You can imagine people thinking, did he just say that? I mean, after all, a debt can only be cancelled by the one to whom it's owed. And the Bible teaches us that all sin ultimately is against God himself. So does Jesus have the right to cancel sins? Well, this is the thinking of these teachers of the law when they hear him. Uh, verse three, at some of this, the teachers of the law said to themselves, this fellow is blaspheming. So who are these teachers of the law? Well, the other name for them is scribes, and they were very highly respected in Jewish culture. They were normally from a priestly background, and um, part of the role of the scribes was to produce the copies of, of the scriptures. But they were also seen as scholars of the Bible, as experts in interpreting and applying God's law. Uh, they were seen as, as speakers of wisdom who would give God's perspective on issues of the day. And they believe that Jesus' words here are blasphemous, that he's insulting the honour of God. Who does he think he is? Surely only God can forgive sins. Uh, as they know in the prophets, the Lord himself says, I, even I, and he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. No one else can claim that prerogative because sin is against God. And these religious experts, they, they realise the significance of what Jesus has just said. Now, they don't say it aloud to Jesus, but he knows what they're thinking inside. Verse four, knowing their thoughts, Jesus said to them, why do you entertain evil thoughts in your hearts? It literally says seeing their thoughts. And it's the same word as in verse two, when he sees the friends uh, bringing uh, the paralyzed man. He now sees the angry thoughts of these people against him. Uh, he has said a beautiful thing, uh, words of grace and comfort and forgiveness. But these experts are angry and critical. The point is, uh, none of us can hide our thoughts and feelings from Jesus and Jesus sees their evil thoughts towards him. They think he's a bad man, an imposter, a false prophet, an enemy of God. And we can, on one hand, we can understand why they might think that, but they're missing the glorious truth of who he actually is. Could it be that this is actually God among them? The Lord who's come to comfort and save them from their sins? so easy for us to shut ourselves off, to, to allow evil thoughts in our heads to take root, to reject 
and dismiss the powerful claims of Jesus. I wonder if uh, we're in danger of doing that, of writing Jesus off. Well, in the face of this controversy and challenge, finally, we see how Jesus demonstrates his authority to forgive sins. We're looking from verse five and Jesus poses these religious experts a question. He says, which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say, get up and walk? Which is easier? Well, on a human level, it's much easier to say your sins are forgiven because you can't see with your eyes whether uh, someone's sins are really forgiven. You can't see uh, whether you know it's effective, whether it's true. But it's much harder to say, get up and walk to a paralyzed man because you know your credibility is at stake. People will see straight away you'll be exposed. Um, you're, you're putting yourself up to scrutiny. You can see straight away whether a person's words have power and authority. But on a deeper level, both of these things are actually impossible, except for God alone who can do these things. Only God can forgive sins, but also only God, the creator, can bring life and restoration to dead and damaged limbs. But here Jesus is speaking to these skeptics and they want hard evidence. So verse six. Jesus says to them, but I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. And so he said to the paralyzed man, get up, take your mat and go home. So Jesus does the harder thing in their eyes. He speaks words which immediately will demonstrate whether or not he truly has power and authority. And amazingly, we read, uh, then the man got up and went home and we can only imagine the scene as people witness him suddenly uh, standing up strength comes into his body and he's healed and he, he walks back without being carried on his mat it's an astonishing miracle and in, in some ways it's a double miracle not just uh, is his paralyzed body healed and repaired but in terms of muscle atrophy you know what would take months and months and months of of rehab is able to do straight away so a complete healing and restoration of his body and verse 8 when the crowd saw this they were filled with awe it actually says they were afraid something awesome about this and they praised God who had given such authority to man so they clearly saw this was an awesome miracle to see this paralyzed man walk an unmistakable act of God himself and they praised God who had given such authority to man. It's an intriguing comment there at the end. Uh, are they missing something about Jesus? Are they just seeing him as a man? Well, it's an astonishing miracle, but it's clearly a miracle with a message. I mean, Jesus healed many people, but this uh, miracle is significant. I mean, after all, I mean, in previous chapters, we've already seen uh, in Matthew's account, the healing of a paralytic in that very same time of Capernaum. But notice here how this miracle points to a greater truth about Jesus. He does it so that people would know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Uh, this term, Son of Man, is uh, a term that Jesus used to refer to himself. On one level, it's quite innocuous. It simply means human being and emphasises his human status. He truly uh, was human but clearly it's a reference also to uh, the book of Daniel in, in chapter 7 there Daniel has a vision and he sees the throne room in heaven and he sees one like a son of man like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven and he's led into God's presence and he's given authority glory and sovereign power and Daniel sees people worshiping him from every uh, nation uh, he sees that he's a king with a kingdom that will last forever. And in Judaism, uh, this son of man figure was seen uh, as a mysterious heavenly figure. But Jesus now says, I am he and I have authority on earth to forgive sins, the authority of God himself. But for Jesus to forgive sins was not a light or easy thing. 
because sin can only be forgiven through atonement and sacrifice. And Jesus knows that he will have to go to the cross to pay the heavy penalty to secure the forgiveness of our sins for all those who will believe in him. And this is the reason why he's come. So as we think about this miracle, how, how does it relate to us? What does this mean for us today? Well, let's recognise firstly that Jesus sees us completely. He knows what's going on inside us, whether it be the guilt that we're carrying around unseen to others or the evil thoughts we have towards him or whether like those friends, we have amazing faith in Jesus and what he can do. Jesus knows us completely. He sees past the outward appearance of our lives and we can't hide anything from him. But the main thing here for us to know is that Jesus has the authority to forgive our sins. Yes, it was a very costly thing to do. And he's, he alone is the one who can do that, who can speak those gracious words to us to bring forgiveness, to lift the burden of guilt from our hearts. So don't be afraid to come to Jesus to receive forgiveness from him. And if you're already believing in Jesus and trusting in him, then know that he, he says to you, take heart, son, take heart, daughter, your sins are forgiven. Let's not be like the experts in the passage who write off Jesus. And yes, maybe for some of us, we're unsure uh, about Jesus. Maybe we still have uh, questions that need answering. Well, if that's the case, can I encourage you to come to Christianity Explored? It's starting uh, this Wednesday evening, 7.45 on Zoom. And it's a chance to examine the evidence and to consider these great claims of Jesus. Well, let's just pray as we finish. Lord Jesus, thank you that you know each of us completely. And we thank you that you have come to proclaim forgiveness of sins. And Lord, we thank you that you've, you've done everything so that we can be forgiven. Lord, help us to, to come to you and to trust in you. And we ask it in your name. Amen.
as we come to the end of our time together this morning, let's bow our heads for a closing prayer. Our Heavenly Father, may the truth of the resurrection inspire us with new hope. May the victory of Christ fill us with new joy. May the reality of his presence fill us with new faith. And so may we serve you with new vigour to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, thank you for being with us today. We pray that you will know the freedom and the joy of sins forgiven in the week ahead and so walk in newness of life in thankfulness to God. And we look forward to being together again next week. i